Hey everyone, uh, so I just wanted to give a trading update, really, what have I been doing? Um, because I've been kind of up to quite a lot of stuff. So first, um, this one. Here's my portfolio, still copying the same three guys. I've got a little gold trade open here as well, just a tiny thing. I'm not using the maximum leverage, I'm, you know, trying to be a bit more conservative. So instead of times 100 leverage, I've got times 50 on it. And if you want to know why I can invest $30 and you can't, it's because I, I joined eToro before you, basically, and I still have access to the old minimum trade sizes. Um, I made a video about that, which I'll link to up here, you know, how they changed it. So I can still make small uh, trades on those things. I don't know if it makes you know, a great deal of difference, but there we are. So I'm still copying the same guys, uh, Mr. Thor, Fastic, and Jay Nemesis, and they're doing well. They're having a bit of a difficult time at the moment because cryptos are having a bit of a difficult time, so it's sort of going sideways, but they're doing, it's all great, it's all good. And I put more money on them. So um, Fastic, I changed it from 200, I changed it to 400. He's doing really well, you know. I was a bit down on Fastic in the beginning because of fees and stuff, but he's, he's just doing consistently really well. Uh, he's a good trader and if I had more money, I'd put more money on him. Um, again, all the things I say, this is not investment advice. I'm not professional. Uh, you've got to do your own research. Uh, this is just my experience. At the moment, uh, Fastic's been doing really well for me, as has Mr. Thor. Now, Mr. Thor, it looks like he's only made me a very small amount. Uh, I was copying him with, I think, 400 or 450. I think 400. And I wanted to put another sort of 350 on him. And it's that question of do you add more funds or do you close the copy and then reopen the copy with open trades kind of selected? Which do you do? If you just uh, add more funds, obviously it can take it takes a while to for him to use that money up. Again, I've made videos about this to use that money up in active trades. If you don't copy the open trade, so adding more funds, if you just click add more funds, it's a bit like selecting don't copy open trades when you first copy someone. Do you know what I mean? The money will be sitting there uh, and it will be in the value of that copy. So up here, it would show you the total value of the copy, but the uh, funds being used in trades might be much less. And then slowly as he makes more trades, that money from the value from the amount you've copied him with will be used up in new trades. So what I did with him is I actually did close the copy. I closed the copy completely and I recopied with open trades. Why did I do that? Because I looked in his portfolio and I saw that he has certain assets which he just holds for a long time, like US um, equities, stocks in US companies, which he's just held for a very long time. So I had, it had been about a month and a half that I've been copying with him and out of 400, he'd still only used, I think, 190 of that money on trades after like a month and a half. And that's just his trading style, you know. He was making, he was sort of in and out of crypto trades fairly frequently, buying and selling crypto. So it was using up some money on them. But he has this sort of bank in his portfolio it has a whole section of equities which he was holding for the long term so he wasn't closing a lot of trades and opening them he was closing and opening say I don't know a certain percentage of his portfolio to use on cryptos but the rest was staying open so I, I wanted to get in on that movement obviously if he's keeping them open these these long-term trades he sees value in them in future um, so I, I wanted to get in on them, so I closed it and I, I reopened with uh, copying open trades. One thing is I, I then, I think I added a bit more, which is why there's that discrepancy, why the value is is uh, up and it's still not using all of my open trades. That's one thing I've, I've discovered is, you know, another way to do it is to copy open trades with a certain amount. So I copy open trades with, I don't know, 50 or 60 or 70% of the money I want to copy someone with. And that buys everything they've got. It'll mean that I'm copying all of their trades. Then straight away, I can press add funds here. So I can copy his open trades. Then once I've done that, I can add funds and I can just add another amount. I can add the extra 30% or extra 50%. And that way that money will only be used up in his new trades. So it sort of, it gets me in on his action, everything he's doing. But it also leaves me safe in case some of the things he's bought are at the top and he he may have bought them here and now they've gone up, you know, and I may buy them, I may copy him here. So he may, it may go down in value, but he's still all right. He's still all right and I'm losing that money. So I want to protect myself a bit, you know. So I, I copied his open trades and then I think I added a little bit more so that he's got more cash to use uh, in new trades, you know. So 
Uh, that's what I did with Mr. Thor. I closed it and recopied. J, uh, so I added 200 to him, about 300 or 400 to him. J, I added, I think, another 400 or 500 to him as well. And with him, I didn't close it and copy open trades because J, he just trades fairly frequently. You know, he's a, he likes to trade a lot. So uh, I just added it with him. Um, added as, you know, just clicked here and did, you know, add funds. Hold on, why did that do that here? And just press the add funds thing. And just added the funds there because I believe he'll use them up in the past. Whenever I've added funds to J, he uses them up fairly quickly. At the moment, he's not because, um, so at the moment, uh, that's the value I have. Copying in 141978. And at the bottom, uh, that's the amount he's got open. It's the amount of that money he's using. So he's only using a thousand of that 1,400. I think that's because he used up, he, was, he said just before Christmas that he was sort of, he'd used up all of his capital. And um, obviously Bitcoin and some of the cryptos have been dropping. So he's, he's probably waiting for stuff to go up and see better entry points. Everything's sort of going down or sideways or it's not doing much at the moment. So I imagine he's waiting for better entry points or better exit points to get rid of some of his old trades, free up the money and start rebuying. So that's what's happening with them. They're all doing well. They're all making me uh, money. I'm happy with that. It's all good. Um, actually, recently, my my mom, my mom and dad wanted to start doing some copy trading. And it's one thing when you go to risk your own money. You know, my money, there's not a lot of money in here. And, I, you know, my money, I'm a bit more, you know, fast and loose with it. Like, you know, I'll take bigger risks. When it's your mom and dad, you start really thinking, oh my God, you know, you readdress those questions. Is this safe? Who are the best people to copy, you know? Because I'm, I'm used to copying people who trade uh, cryptos a lot and who, who are making sort of very big returns. But when it comes to like my parents, who really can't afford to lose the money, you know, um, at all, not like anyone can, but when it's your parents, you like extra vigilant. So I think they're copying these guys at the moment as well. And, and it made me sort of reassess, you know, how do I really feel? How do you really get safe with this? How do you really feel secure? And, you know, looking at their statistics and, you know, obviously there's risk. There's always risk involved with this. But um, anyhow, that made me look at it again and, and, and all the rest of it. So that's what I'm doing with, with these. I've got that little gold trade on. Um, and there we are with the, the, the three of them. That's great. If I had more money, I think I'd just add more to these these three at the moment. I might put a little bit on uh, good going because he's into gold and currencies, regular currencies. So it might diversify my portfolio a bit, but I'm not sure. We'll see. Um, so that's it with the copy trading at the moment. It's going fine. I, I love it. Uh, you know, passive, absolutely passive income. I was just thinking about how passive it is. These people are sort of watching screens and trading furiously. And I get to just, uh, I'm still in awe of that. So there's my, my uh, copy trading. About At the moment, about two thirds of my money is in, that I'm using to trade is in copy trading. The other third has gone into cryptos, really. I've been, you know, trying to work all that out. And um, so the first one I'll show you is here, uh, Binance. What have I got on Binance? So Binance Crypto Exchange, again, I'll sh here's a link to a playlist showing the process for how I signed up for these. You know, I went to try and find out how to sign up and how to buy cryptos because eToro doesn't list all of the cryptos. And on eToro, I'm doing copy trading. And you know, there, as I said in the last video, there's there's two real big approaches to, to cryptos. There's the one where you're actively trading it and trying to buy low and sell high and buy low and sell high and buy the dips, you know, and you're in and out of the market. And the other one is just holding the coins, you know, hodling. Um, so people just buy the coins and they hold them for a long period of time. It's more of a longer time frame thing. They know that it will go up and down, but generally they expect the trend to go up, so they're just holding them. So that's what I'm doing on these crypto exchanges. I also wanted to see how they work and have access to other coins. eToro has, a, I don't know, a few cryptos at the moment, but there are a lot of other coins, a lot of other cryptos. And I've been watching tons of videos about them and trying to find out which ones to buy. And you know, I kind of want to sound like I know what I'm talking about here, you know, and, but it's all new to me. I'm learning, you know, I just, you know, working out how to sign up to these exchanges. How do you move money around? You know, I didn't know that there were certain exchanges like Coinbase where you can buy cryptos for actual money and you can't do that on other exchanges. On other exchanges, you, you trade cryptos to cryptos. All this stuff is new to me. Um, so anyhow, here we are. Uh, on my uh, deposits and withdrawals, I go to my funds part deposits in the drawers, shows me my wallets. 
um, what I've got. I'm going to hide small assets because that's not a lot of use. So here I've got these ones. Now all these names, good lord, there's a lot of names. And remembering which one's which and what to do. How have I been researching them? Again, watching YouTube videos, people telling, you know, which is the Bitcoin for 2018. But then also once I hear one, I go and just read a bit about it. And for each crypto, there's something called a white paper, which is a thing that the people who develop the crypto put out stating, you know, the technology behind it, the niche it's going to fill, um, the architecture of it, how it's built, what their plan is and all the rest of it. Have I read all the white papers? <laughs> no, no, I haven't. But I have looked at their websites and just sort of done a bit of a vague assessment. And a lot of it's just speculation. A lot of what I'm doing at the moment is just trying to, you know, I look back and I sort of, you remember the dot com bubble? Everyone talks about the dot com bubble in, you know, uh, I don't know, 17 years ago now or something, or 18 years ago. They talk about this dot-com bubble where everyone was releasing websites and no one knew what the internet was. It was brand new. There was no internet, really, uh, or no commercially used internet. So um, the dot-com bubble, everyone started investing in companies which had a website. People were spending hundreds of thousands to build their website, and it was like, you know, very basic HTML website. And eventually all these, these companies got overvalued and... and uh, it, the whole sector collapsed, everyone's got panicked, withdrew all their money, said all these companies are overvalued, and they call it the dot-com bubble, you know, bust. And uh, But really, they were right, actually. The internet now, you know, everything runs on the internet. The dot-com bubble, yes, but realistically, that was the advent of a, a brand new layer, not even a brand new technology, it's a whole layer of functionality for the whole world, you know? It, it was true. And if you look at companies like Amazon, which kind of came out of that, I mean, Amazon, imagine you'd bought the stock when it was, you know, 50 cents or a dollar. It's now, what, a thousand something. Jeff Bezos, the guy who owns it, richest guy in the world. The dot-com people, they were right. There was just something kind of wrong with how they did it. And I'm kind of looking at this in the same way, really, cryptos and stuff, as the blockchain and all of this decentralized stuff is adding an entirely new layer of functionality to the world. And, you know, I don't know if that's true or not, but I kind of, it's looking that way, you know? So I want to be the guy who bought Amazon when it was 50 cents, you know? I just don't know which the next Amazon is. Or obviously Amazon is totally centralized, so that's probably the anti-example that I should be giving. But um, in terms of value, that's what I mean. So I'm buying these now, and I'm buying the the altcoins. There's another name for some of these coins, and it's not that complimentary. I'm buying the smaller coins, um, which really, you know, some of them are more expensive, some aren't. Tron, uh, Ethlen, Stellar Lumens, these are just names. I'm saying names. A lot of people sort of seem to be quoting names and saying you know, catchphrases like ICO and da 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 and blockchain and it makes you sound like you know what's going on. I think very few people, very few people actually know what's going on and uh, I'm kind of one of them. I'm learning though. I'm learning. I'm learning. So status request network, quant stamp, Cardano. Again, do your own research. Don't take my advice. Don't just buy these because I bought them because I'll feel terrible if they go down. I don't really know what I'm doing. So these are the ones I've bought though and I've looked them up. I've had a read about them and they seem fairly... Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm happy enough to have a go with these. At the moment, I've got $656 worth in there. That was $750 two days ago. I mean, they've taken a bit of a beating over the last couple of days. So, um, But I'm just going to leave them. Now, my goal with these is to hold on to them for years, basically. Uh, if I go up here, that's Binance. Bittrex, uh, if I go, it's another exchange. Bittrex is a different crypto exchange. Why? Because I, I can only buy certain coins on certain exchanges. So on Bittrex, again, I go to my wallets, and all I've got in here is Verge. Uh, XVG, I've got some Verge in there. That is, um, that sounded wrong. I've got some in there, so there we are. And then Bitfinex. I'm in Bitfinex, the one I couldn't get into. Um, somehow I'm in. And uh, now Bitfinex, I found some, some smart stuff, all right? So, uh, all right, the banks, basically, there's a thing called peer-to-peer -peer financing. Peer financing, okay? I didn't know this existed. I talked to a trader friend of mine. He trades like kind of classical markets the other day. And he goes, yeah, Tom, that's always been available. How do you know about that? And that, how didn't I know about this? I wish I had known about some of this stuff before. It's, it's, I think it's fantastic. All right, so what, what this does is 
Now, I know that the, the safest place to store your coins are on a cold storage wallet. So it's like a USB stick, plug it into your computer, download your cryptos onto the wallet, take your wallet offline, and it's the least hackable. You know, there's an air gap. They can't really hack into that yet. I don't know, but that's the safest. It's not so safe storing my cryptos on an exchange. I know that. There's, you know, Exodus and all the rest of it. Um, but uh, I'm, I moved my IOTA and my um, Litecoin. So if I go here to my wallets, I move my IOTA and my Litecoin and my Dash. So IOTA, Dash and Litecoin. I've moved them all onto this exchange, onto Bitfinex because of um, this thing, peer financing. And what this enables you to do is whilst you store your cryptos, whilst you hold your cryptos here, you can actually put them out um, in, you can put them into, there are three types of wallets. So you've got a, a trading wallet, a margin wallet, and a funding wallet for each coin. So I'm storing them all in the, the relevant funding wallet. And what I can do is I can loan those cryptos out um, to other traders whilst I'm holding them. I loan them out, other traders, here we go, I go to the funding tab here, and there are other traders, I'll go to, let's go to here, um, Litecoin, all right? These are all people who are asking to borrow, uh, they wanna borrow cryptos so they can make bigger trades, all right? And that's here, these are all the people, this is the amount, the amount of days they wanna hold them for, the amount they want, and this is the rate of interest they'll give you. So you can lend your cryptos to people, they will use them for trading, you can't lose them. So the system, if it looks like the person who's borrowing your cryptos is gonna lose so much money they can't pay back your cryptos, then the system will automatically close their trade and give you back your money. So that's kind of safe. As far as I can see, you can't lose them. As far as I can see for now, don't take my word for it, do your research. But these are all the people who are wanting to borrow stuff, these are all the people who are selling stuff. So I've set mine, I've put my Litecoin in my Litecoin funding wallet, my Dash in my Dash funding wallet, my IOTA in my IOTA funding wallet. I've set it to auto renew here. I'm gonna do a separate video, I'll do a separate video about how this works. But basically what it means is that every day I'm earning a little bit of interest on these cryptos. I didn't know you could do this stuff. You can do this with dollars as well. I could put dollars in here and loan dollars out to other people. This is what banks do. You know, this is what banks have been doing with my money. Every time I put money in a bank, they don't just keep it all in there, in a box marked Tom. Here's Tom's box, let's keep 100% in the bank. No, every time someone goes to get a loan from a bank, a car loan or a whatever loan, that money, where do you think that's coming from? That's you, you and my savings. Everything we've put into the bank, they then take my money and they loan it out and they get interest on it whilst they're holding on to my money. That's something they did and they would never give me that interest, you know, they'd never do that. What this is here is it's a way of holding my coins, and again, it's being loaned out, but I'm getting some of that interest. I did not know this stuff was possible. These are amazing ways to make money, and um, I wish someone had told me, so I kind of feel all right shouting this stuff from the rooftops. Again, I'm just learning, so there might be things that I can't see about this, but this seems like a fantastic idea at the moment. So my Litecoin, my Dash, and my Iota are actually making me interest. Uh, I can go to my reports and I can go to my funding earnings and uh, last two weeks and I only started doing this what five days ago or something. So here we are each day look there's the 8th, the 9th, the 10th, the 11th, four days ago. Each day look there's my little bit of interest on each coin. I'm getting little bits of interest. Not only am I holding them, so I'm holding it, Litecoin, and the value of Litecoin is going up or down, blah, blah, whatever, it's doing whatever. But every day I'm making a little bit of interest on it. I think that's fantastic. Uh, I kind of want to do more of this. This is amazing. Uh, they call it a very conservative way to make money on assets, but this is just, this is quite genius. So there we are. And by the way, everything where, when I want to find out about a coin, so I look up a coin or I watch these YouTube two, uh, videos about which is the next best coin. Whenever I want to read something about it, I go to this site here. Um, crypto, it's called CoinMarketCap, CoinMarketCap.com. And you can just type any of them in. So if I do here, if I type in Litecoin, uh, I can just go to the Litecoin page and uh, it will show me a little bit about it. Uh, and that I, I, I search for them on... Um, their actual website as well. So here, look, website. I can go to the, the Litecoin website and I can read about their intents and their purposes and 
Global decentralized currency based on blockchain technology. My God, how many times I've read that. So you can find out about them. And that's that's what I'm doing. I'm doing a little bit of research and then I'm just uh, a little bit of binge buying. So the other thing that I want to show you is my Exodus wallet. So uh, if I look at Exodus here, so um, my Litecoin, I moved, I moved Dash and Litecoin onto Bitfinex so I can do the peer financing. Uh, the creds up, Gnosis is probably up, that's only $31, but I had only bought $10, do you know what I mean? So that's gone up twice, you know, 200% increase. Civics doing, has been doing very well recently, Bitcoin around the same, Bitcoin Cash around the same, Ethereum's been going up, but EOS I've still got, I'm not using Exodus so much at the moment because I want to invest more in, oh my god it's gone dark, I want to invest more in uh, coins which I can actually use for that peer financing at the moment. Um, so that's where I am, that's my current state of things. About a third in cryptos, uh, some of those cryptos are being used for peer financing, making some extra money. I'll make a video on that because I just think that's genius, I wish someone had told me about this. And then copy trading, another thing I wish I knew about before. Two thirds of my money are in copy trading still, copying J, Mr. Thor and Fastic. A little bit of gold. So there we are, it's my current update, it's gone very dark, looks like it's gonna rain. Uh, hope you guys are doing well.